The younger generation of Mexican-American activists in the late 1960s and 70s emphasized their own distinct cultures and histories. We saw in the United Farm Workers strike in California that grape growers were brought to the negotiating table as a result of a national consumer boycott of table grapes. There was uh, uh, the there's, there's notion of la raza, la raza unida, the Chicano movement. The Chicano movement is going to be founded based on years of experience with organizing against the racialization process. It just didn't happen overnight. But different generations, as you, as you witnessed in the film Los Mineros, through mutual aid societies, through unionization efforts, and then World War II, that World War II generation, they came back and said, wait a minute, I fought in the United States, I fought for the United States, we came back with medals of honor, and we're still experiencing this discrimination. Well, finally, the children of those groups and the children of immigrants, Mexican immigrants, and the Mexicans that were here, all of this combined community developed and created what is known as the Chicano Movement. Let's go from, uh, take a uh, look at a film clip from a documentary on the Chicano Movement. Nineteen sixty eight was a time in which the entire planet was feeling the reverberations of a new a new spirit. It certainly it was going on in Mexico. It was going on in France. It was going on all over the United States with students of every single state and college and town demanding that there was and had to be a better alternative to what was going on in the world at that time. The Vietnam War was a big issue for everybody, particularly for Chicanos, because we were dying there in higher proportions to anyone else. And no one was acknowledging that. So that our contributions didn't mean anything to the country. And we saw reflected in the world that people thought that something could be done. And we felt that we had to do what we could do with our lives as well. That was the time in 1968. <laughs> never a school term like this one. It began with a simple protest by students who wanted a better education. School officials became involved, and the parents, then the police, and the FBI. Before long, school children were branded as subversive. Their lives threatened, all because they wanted a better education. Los Angeles. In the 1960s, this was home to almost 100,000 Mexican Americans. It was the largest barrio in the United States. 
growing up in East Los Angeles, I wasn't actually aware of it as a, as a young child, but it, it soon became apparent that uh, I grew up in a very isolated, very segregated neighborhood, a community that was totally separate from the rest of Los Angeles. Education was seen as a way to break down those barriers, a way for young people to one day have what everyone else had. I was buying into this whole thing. Um, we're gonna we're gonna get back, but we're only for a few minutes, crew. If we can go back to that film, because uh, I want to talk about the Chicano movement. You know, the Chicano Power movement. It was it marked the culmination of previous generations' organizational endeavors. And in fact, Chicano power, Chicano, Chicano itself, that identity was based on a cultural renaissance. Uh, you know, the dominant society was forced to contend with a new resistance to old and ingrained prejudices and judicial practices. So Chicano gave uh, and continues to give people a basis for cultural pride, a basis for ethnic pride. And this, what the Mexicano, once the Mexicano comes into the U.S., he becomes Chicanoized because this is the Chicano process. It's a four-part process. You have to fight against political powerlessness, against educational deprivation, against social racial discrimination, against uh, uh, um, the dual wage system, the dual wage structure. So this is what happens to a Mexicano once they come into the U.S. They become Chicanoized. And this is what happens to all Latin Americans if they really appreciate and under understand the system and what happens to them because they're Latinos. They become the Chicano eyes. This is what Chicano meant. This is what to be Chicano means, is to be an understanding of the processes of change where you are involved in a civil rights struggle. And you have to make sure that everyone has their rights. So it affected the culture, the lifestyles, and the family relationships, and the politics of the community. The movement was distinctively different than any preceding it. And it affected people differently and at different times. It affected directly and indirectly every Spanish-speaking person from the Western Hemisphere. And students, you're reading about Juan Gonzalez, so understand the different periods, especially, I believe it's in this chapter 10, 